So I'm sure you know that sometimes candidates lie. Have you ever caught someone lying in the middle of an interview? Here's an example. There was a candidate who claimed to be a contracting supervisor. Well, upon further and closer questioning, it turns out he'd actually only built a doghouse in his own backyard several years ago. Another candidate said that he had worked for three jobs over the last several years. But when the savvy recruiter called to follow up, one company said he'd worked there for two days, another company said that he'd worked there for one day, and a third company said he'd worked there for no days. <laughs> Not a great track record for him. How do we trust people? I mean, we don't really, we can't trust people. We have to make sure that we understand their motivation, right? They are desperate to get a job in most cases and they'll say anything. And they may have a resume that was crafted by their Uncle Harold, or you can have one of these experiences where uh, the candidate claims they have tons more years than they have. One 32 year old claimed he had 25 years of experience. Another person claimed his father's experience. They did happen to have the same name, so. <laughs> so this next section is only for those who are looking for tips and tricks to move their career forward. And, you know, we're going to talk about things that have the ability to stop your career in your tracks, uh, make you want to leave, make you want to quit, um, ways to go forward, ways to earn more, ways to set yourself up for a promotion, all those kinds of things. And again, I need your submissions, so please keep them coming. Thank you so much for all those who have already submitted stories. This next story, it just made my heart sink. There was a manager in the organization who had a direct report, bright young fellow, laid a good case at her feet to say, hey, I deserve a raise. And she says, gosh, you really do deserve a raise. I think let's, hey, let's go down to HR. I'll, I'll, I'll give him a recommendation. And so the HR manager there says, okay, let's, I'll look into it. They come back with a number that gives him maybe a five or 6% raise. And when the manager saw what he'd be making, she said, didn't realize, but now he's making more money than I am. What a headache, what a nightmare, not only for that manager, but the HR person who has to sort, sort all this out, right? Well, the young guy did deserve a raise, but she, the manager, was so far behind. It was so sad to hear this story. So here's my advice. <laughs> when something like this happens. As an HR professional, you probably are becoming aware much more about salary inequality, and you'll have come up with things like this as well in your performance, I mean, in, in, your, in, your, uh, in the performance of your job. So it's, it's a systemic problem oftentimes, and it may have affected you as well. The thing is, a lot of women don't ask for what they deserve in organizations or when they do they're turned down much more frequently than men why is this it's very very complicated but here's some of the factors and a lot of this is from a really wonderful book called women don't ask by linda babcock it's also from link uh, lean in uh, from Sheryl Sandberg. There's some great books out there that I've had a, uh, the lucky experience of being able to get my hands on and read these from these very smart women that basically the upshot is there's a lot of different ways in which women are sort of held back and it's not exactly clear. It's not exactly easy to spot it, but um, part of it is women ourselves. We don't ask as frequently as men or as creatively as men for what we deserve. And sometimes just asking, we are penalized. And um, actually there was a book by uh, Linda, no, what was her name? Mika Brzezinski. She was, I think I said that right. She also wrote a book about 
um, her incredible struggles to be paid what she was worth on the Morning Joe show. So there's a lot of great information out there. What we need to know as women is negotiation tactics that work for women. Uh, we need to know that men are not necessarily waiting for raise time at the end of the year or whatever to bring up the subject of their salaries. They're asking much more often. Uh, they're asking for odd things like, for example, um, you may have heard from the research about uh, women and men leaving a college institution and going into their entry level jobs. Men are actually earning right off the bat $4,000 more than the women. That's that's what the study showed. And this was back in the probably in the 90s. And, you know, why does it happen? Because they think negotiation is a big part of accepting a job. Women, when they negotiate, they don't ask for as much and they're not as successful at it. Now, why? It's not because we're dreadful at it, but there are some biases that we're, we're coming up against. And so uh, there was a story of two people who were hired as lab managers, a woman and a man. And the woman, um, she, took what she was offered and she started the work. The man says, you know what, I'm gonna need a, a lab assistant. Uh, I'm going to need um, some help with research and I'm gonna need some more space. And so he basically gave himself the wherewithal to succeed much more effectively than that the woman who didn't ask for these things. And it just didn't occur to her that those were up for grabs, you know? So there's some really, really fascinating stuff out there, and I hope that you will take some time and find these books, especially if you think that you are behind in your own salary, especially if you think that in your organization there's a systematic or, or you know, maybe not caused by your department, but something that you, your entire organization could be penalized for, especially if it hits the media. And, uh, you know, if... if if there is a systemic problem, you need to uncover it, okay? So do your studies, figure out what's going on, and, and come up with a plan. Because I really hate to hear about these kinds of nightmares where uh, women are falling behind and they don't even know it, okay? Now, in most states, it's still legal and a practice to ask for someone's previous salary. Because generally, the way it works is if someone's making a low amount at one company, and the, um, the next job is a good step up from them, for them, the offer might actually be based on their low salary because, uh, you know, they might just take a bump and they'll come right over. Then they're starting also low at their new organization. They don't make up the ground. Well, there's a, uh, a couple of states that now say it's illegal to ask, what is your previous salary? And I think this is the best practice. So if you want to implement this at your company, thank you. Okay, so I really don't like the idea of, of women struggling so much to just reach the same salary level as men. And there's really no reason for it in this day and age. There really isn't. So that's just my opinion. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you look up some of those books I mentioned because there's some amazing information in there. So if you have a good story for the HR outhouse or for the what would you do section, I hope that you will write to me. There's a link somewhere below where you can enter and anonymously send me your stories. And I love to read every single one.